Hi Trans by Deaf, this is Christine, and I'm your Sunday host. Uh, the topic this week is funny transition-related stories. Um, the first story I'm going to tell is just from a couple weeks ago. It's uh, from, from New Year's. And I think I might have already shared this story with you, but I'm going to share it again because I think it's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> I, I went to a New Year's Eve party with a friend, uh, a newer friend of mine. Um, it was at her house, and she was hosting it for maybe 20 people, 25 people even. Um, many of which I'd never met before. Um, and I was outed right away. Um, they're, they're a very accepting group, um, but I, I made no effort to hide that I was trans. Um, and everyone knew the friend of mine who was there, Lisa, um, and they knew that she was trans. Um, so, it, I, I was outed right away. One of the people there was a military guy. Um, he, he's not working in the military anymore, but he's, he's former counterterrorism. He's been all over the world in the military, uh, done interrogations of people. You know, thinks a lot of himself. Um, and by all means, he's a pretty nice guy, I think. But he was a big jerk to me. Um, <laughs> you know, it, and I, I, I don't think it was intentional. I, I don't think he understood what he was saying or what he was doing. It's just like ignorant <laughs> and, and drunk. <laughs> But, but the story the story goes like this. Um, he, at one point, tells me that um, he doesn't believe that anyone could ever not know that they were dealing with a trans person. Um, and uh, he said that the people that, you know, find themselves in a situation with somebody and they, they had no clue... They're just lying. They're faking it. Because he would know right away from the very first instant that he saw somebody that they were trans. Um, and so, in the process of the evening, I, I ended up coming back to him. And I showed him pictures. Four pictures of four of my friends on Facebook. And I'm not going to say who all of them are, but I will tell you who the trans person was at the end of the story. Um, because we all know this trans person. Um, I showed him a picture of... A feminine lesbian, um, very very feminine lesbian, um, and even known in the community. <laughs> but but um, he mis misgendered her. He said that she was a trans woman. Um, so I showed him another picture, and this one is is also of a cisgendered woman um, and straight, a heterosexual cisgendered woman. Um, and he misgendered her, said that she was a trans woman. And then I showed him a picture of, of a lesbian woman who's very butch. Um, and he misgendered her, said that she was a man. Not a trans man, <laughs> a man. <laughs> And, um, finally, I, I showed him a picture of an actual trans woman, and it was Katie. And he said that she is a woman. Not a trans woman. The cis, normal, cis woman. So he blew all four. Completely. <laughs> Had no clue. What are you saying? And I, I just got such a laugh out of this idiot. Um, so anyway, so that that's one story. Um, another story, another story that's that's a little bit more recent even than that. Um, or maybe I, I guess it was back in December. Um, I went to see my ophthalmologist, and when I went to see my ophthalmologist, we were doing sort of a intake thing, and he's sort of bantering around with me, and we're we're talking and kind of. Um, going through some basic medical background stuff. And um, 
somewhere in the process, he comments on my shoes. And, and my shoes, well, they're, they're men's shoes. Because I have huge feet. I think we've talked about this, right? So I have huge feet. Um, but I, I didn't like that they're men's shoes. So I got these pink shoelaces. Um, and I put the pink shoelaces in my, my tennis shoes. Because I can get away with it. Because I'm a woman. And women can get away with these things. Um, and in the process, he's like talking about how he actually really liked the pink shoelaces. And, but how because he's a man, he can't do that. Uh, and I said, well, you know, I used to be a man. <laughs> and he, he went... I said, well, yeah, I'm transgender. <laughs> and he oh, oh, okay. And then after that, the entire time, I mean, up until that point, he gendered me with female pronouns perfectly, w without any question, you know. Um, but after that time, he misgendered me pretty consistently. Um, and, and it's just funny, funny watching... First of all, I told him because I, don't know, I thought it was funny. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny that he was uh, interested in that. And then I'm pretty open about being trans, so um, I'm pretty quick to out myself. Um, but I, I didn't particularly enjoy being misgendered after I had told him. Um, but it was it was still very interesting just to see his reaction when I told him. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> and I've seen that reaction a couple of times in transition when, when I've told people when I've outed myself to people um, who weren't aware that I was trans, like like that confused look at first, and then oh, it comes to them. Um, but. My last story, the, the story that's most recent, um, I went to the hospital with, uh, with my entire family because my son broke his nose, and when he broke his nose, he gave himself a blood clot in the nose, and it was causing some swelling and would cause some deterioration in the nose if we didn't get the clot taken out. Um, so they scheduled a pretty quick surgery, sort of, not an emergency surgery, but within a couple of days of the time that we found out about the blood clot. Um, and so we pulled everybody out of school and the whole family went because it would have been impossible to leave the surgery and make it back up to get the kids from school. Um, and it's hard to have friends pick up the kids from school because it's just, it's overwhelming for most of our friends, either of our friends. Um, and, you know, most of my friends work, most of Helen's friends homeschool and have no experience dealing with the public school system. Um, so anyway, we're all down there, the whole family, doing this hospital thing. And various people are coming in and out and they're talking to us and interacting with us without any problems or any questions, until we get to this anesthesiologist. Um, and he's going through his questions. He, he doesn't have any problems with us, per se. But he's going through the questions, and he gets to this point where, where it's asking for the names of the people that are here with my son, the patient. Um, and he, he stops, and he's looking back and forth between Helen and I, and it's like... I mean, he paused probably for a good 30 seconds to a minute, just looking back and forth <laughs> between the two of us. And then he turns to Helen and he says, So you're the mother? And Helen says, Yeah, yeah, I'm the mother. Um, and she looks very pleased with herself, very, very happy that, that he identified that she was the mother. <laughs> and so he, he then turns to me and he goes, so you're the grandmother. <laughs> and Helen gets the scowl on her face. <laughs> she looks pretty upset. And about that same time, Lauren bursts out with a laugh. And Helen 
starts laughing too because <laughs> I just got called really old <laughs> and um you know I, I I didn't know myself you know am I am I supposed to be mad that that he just said that I'm old or am I am I supposed to be happy that he gendered me correctly <laughs> and it was sort of a toss up <laughs> Um, so, you know, I, I, I finally, you know, not, not a terribly long pause here, but I, I kind of very quietly say, well, I'm the father. Um, and he goes, okay, ma'am, <laughs> and takes a note. Um, but he never does that thing like the ophthalmologist does where he started misgendering me. So I'm pretty sure that what he actually decided is we were lesbians. <laughs> and, and that's how it was perceived. Um, because it seemed to be that way with most of the people there for the rest of the day. Um, they, they seemed to see us both as the parents, but probably lesbians, I think. Um, which I'm cool with, but it really pisses hell off. <laughs> that's not what she wants. Um, so, <laughs> that is my last funny story for transition. Um, you know, there, there are some high moments that are just things that you just have to look at and you just have to laugh. Um, because expectations that people have, you know, get thrown out the window when they deal with us. Um. You know, we we defy the rules, the expectations that that are out there. And, you know, we don't try to, but we're different. So, anyway, have, have a great week. And um, I'll talk to you next week. If you have any questions, any comments, let me know below. Bye.